Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. It is time for the Cowboys to make a long run in the playoffs. And here to talk about it with me, John Radigan, is your friend, Nate Newton. And there are very few people who have the experience that Nate does in the playoffs. So he is going to offer a special edition this week of what, Nate? Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. Hey, yeah. Rag, good yeah. to see yeah. you this and nobody, morning. Nobody can tell you more about the playoffs than Nate. I mean, maybe Tom Brady could because he was in more, but there aren't many people out there who have been in more playoffs than Nate Newton was in the 90s, man. This week is special, isn't it, Nate? It is very, very special. And, you know, and, uh, you know, I just want to thank Niagara for having us once again. And, you yeah. know, and see, can we get this one flushed without any, without any problems? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We hope we won't need a plunger, nothing like yes, it. Yes, sir. Hey, but Niagara products, you don't. I promise you, I use them. Never. Okay. Never. Never. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, what what is this week like, Nate? It, it, you know, I know in Jimmy's world, uh, your, your main coach, Jimmy Johnson, his world was, we want every week to be the same, right? Because oh, that yes. way you repeat what you've done, yes, right? Yes, yes. But is it hard? Is it hard to make – the first week in particular of the playoffs, the same as, you know, week four of the season? Not when you have done a almost perfect job of having home games. The Cowboys have two home games. If they can win the first one, then they will have another one at home. That is the key to making things as close to normal as possible because now – the game is at 3, what, 30, Sunday? So now you go from yeah, Sunday yeah. to Sunday. Now you already have that routine. You've been through it during the regular season. Now, yes, more fans, will, uh, uh, more fans, family, and friends will want tickets and want to get in on, on the party now. All the band, with the, the bandwagon is going to get really he- heavy because, you know, at the beginning yeah. of the season, it was kind of halfway empty. Then, you know, towards the uh, end of the season, it started filling up. So now all the bandwagoners and all the guys that said, remember me, now they're on board. But other than that, it's basically the same. You know, uh, Coach McCarthy has already said that for all of you girls and guys out there in the media that want to talk about Green Bay, go up to Wisconsin because that's about all you're going to get from him. He's totally focused on the Dallas Cowboys and his team will be fully totally focused on what the Cowboys has to do to compete to com- to compete against this uh Green Bay team. Yeah, which which I think is such a great point Nate because w- what McCarthy is saying there basically is of course you have to game plan for Green Bay. Yes. But we're not worried about Green Bay, right? We're worried about the Dallas Cowboys. If we play our game McCarthy, Mike McCarthy feels if the Cowboys play their game, then it doesn't matter what Green Bay does, right? Right. This is the amazing thing. They, I think, what they, they, Green Bay is what nine and eight or whatever the record may be. The Cowboys are twelve and five and five. Okay, we're the number two seed. I think they're the number seven seed. We put ourselves in a better position than them. Not saying that they're not a good team, not saying that they're not a solid team, but our record and our work that we put in says that we are a better team. We earn the right to have home field advantage. Now, what I think record says, unless you are a hot team that's on fire, I think what record says is, you have prepared better, more consistently 
game by game than the team with the lesser record. I'm not saying you have better talent. I'm not saying you have the best players or the greatest coaches. I'm just saying on a more consistent basis against basically the same competition at the NFL, you prepare game by game a little bit better so you got rewarded a better position. The Cowboys are 12 and 5 because they have played some great competition. They've lost some ugly games. They've won some ugly games and vice versa. Pretty games, same thing. But this is the deal, Rad. It is about what you do well, minimum, minim, minimizing your weaknesses and playing to your strengths. Number one, and first and foremost, yeah. we are a team that specializes in playing with a lead. When we score first or we are even with the other team, offensively we are better and defensively we are great. Because that uh, unleashes our defense uh, to do the things that they do best. That is pressure the quarterback, get him off his spot, sack him, disrupt him, and now we become the turnover team that we desire. And that is what this Cowboys team needs to be concentrating on. How can our offense get off to a quick and positive start so that our defense can take over the game. Because when our defense take over the game, then all of a sudden the turnovers come in, in, in great numbers. And if Green Bay want to start, and I'm just giving you the front end up front, I'm giving you what a coach is telling his team. But if Green Bay come in here and slow this thing down, and what we like to say, uh, uh, take the air out of the ball, trying to control tempo, trying to control time and possession, now we may have some problems then. Because we have proven over time in the playoffs that we're not a team that want to deal with a, a nagging running team, a team that just won't go away. So if Green Bay can be consistent in what they do, play sound defense, and run the ball, uh, that's where our problems would lie at. Yeah, and you know when you look at that, that taking the air out of the ball, in a way – it seemed like that was what the commanders were trying to do last week, Nate, because, you know, at one point when it's 10-7 and they had scored on a, you know, a couple of, I mean, a couple of not fluke plays, but, you know, uh, just trick plays, plays that kind of fell their way. Fluke plays. Right? Yeah. Trick, trick okay, plays. Okay, we'll call them flukes, right? <laughs> they score in a couple of fluke plays, certainly the blocked field goal is oh, a fluke, my God. right? So they score on fluke plays still. Right? It gives them right. confidence, yes. and there's a moment there where you could, and it crossed my mind watching the game, it crossed my mind, dang, you know, Washington might just be able to jump up and do this thing because they got confidence now. And then one drive, one drive, and I'm like, oh, no way. Dallas going to blow this team out because of that talent differential. You could just see it. Now, it won't be as great this week because this is another playoff team, the, but theoretically – there is a talent differential here too. Y yes, yes. And and we do have the advantage at quarterback. This this even though uh young the young fella uh what was what, what Jordan it? Love, yeah. Lo Jordan Love, even though he's thrown 32 <laughs> TDs, 11 interceptions, he's 64% uh completion rate. This guy is poised, he's calm, he's rushed for over uh 200 yards. Uh, he's got four TDs rushing. The kid is talented, but he yeah. hasn't played in this pinpoint laser focused playoff. They are, I repeat, they are a much better team than the Washington Commanders, mentally, physically, and spiritually. No one, no one, I repeat, no one but the, but the cheesehead. The Wisconsin loyal, they were the only <laughs> ones that thought that they would be in the playoffs. And for the first four weeks, they didn't even believe it. So now right. they are here. Uh, Coach uh, Coach, Coach uh, LaFleur, my hat's off to you. Because they, they all thought, all the fans thought, gave you no credit, but you got your team a seventh spot in the playoff, and you are here. Uh, I do not. And I think these coaches, by what Coach uh, McCarthy said, by Coach, what Coach Dan Quinn said, I, they they know the danger of this game. 
uh, right here because if this, this kid can catch on fire, you don't throw 32 touchdowns and only 11 interceptions in a season as a first-year player. He's not a rookie, but he's a first-year starter. This guy's on fire, man. This guy's doing what he yeah. needs to do, and we cannot let him uh, get his confidence up. Then we'll be like, wow, yeah. the second coming of, you know, the Green Bay faithful because, it's done, you know, Green Bay has never, ever been through a stretch where they've had terrible, terrible quarterbacks like the Cowboys have. They've always no. seemed to have always fallen on that guy, and they've been able to give him a couple of years on the bench, and then he come in and he starts to shine. This is no, this is no uh, exception right here. This kid, this kid Jordan Love is nice. Yeah, so what you have here, Nate, is the Cowboys against the youngest team in the NFL. Yes. And I see today a note where they are the fourth youngest ever to make the playoffs, and the others were all from the 70s, right? They're a very young team yes. headed into the playoffs. Now, that can affect you one of two ways, right? Either of two ways. Mm -hmm. It can be like, wow, we're so young and dumb, we don't even know, and we go and we're crazy and we win, right? right. Or it can be like, Holy crap, where are we? Oh, my right. gosh. We, we, we don't know nothing about this. Cowboys have been here every year. Oh, well, what do we do? You know, um, what do you think? How does it go? Uh, you're right. I mean, because you got to remember, we, we at that time when I was playing with one of the youngest teams ever, when we was playing, yeah. and, and everybody was like, uh, and not so young in age, but young in playoff experience, and everybody would thought we would fold. Uh, but – we played a little bit better than most people thought. And that's what scares you about this Green Bay team. Even though the Cowboys should have uh, a notch up on them because we've been in the last two uh, years of playoffs, uh, the, these guys, um, you got to understand, they're just a year away from uh, that serial killer that sits up in uh, New York. So, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, so Green Bay is not scared of us. Not as a team, as a whole. I mean, you know, you you look at uh, Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, uh, J even Jaden Reed. These guys are not scared of us. Uh, Kenny Clark on defense, uh, uh, Preston Smith. These guys know us. They have played against us year in and year out. So the core of their team is not fearful of Dallas. The but the but the head of that snake. That is who we got to get to. If we can get to yeah. Jordan Love, it don't matter what the rest of them think. If we, if we can put pressure right. on him, if, if, if Parson can be Parson, if De DeMarcus um, uh, Lawrence can come out of there with a couple of hits, you know, I know he's a great run defender. But here, what I'm what I'm hoping, and I'll keep repeating, is we have to get a lead. We have yeah. to get a lead. If we get any type of lead and can unleash uh, – our, 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 the pressure of our defense on these guys, it makes for a long day for them. But by the same token, I believe that if these guys hang in here, then the Cowboys have to win this by the skin of their teeth. I, I, uh, Aaron Jones will be screaming for the ball. A.J. Dillon will be screaming for the ball. They, uh, they time of possession, they average around about 29 point, uh, four or three minutes a game. So it ain't like they just going out there – uh, not controlling the tempo of the game or portions of the game because they're almost 30 minutes a game. So when you're around 30 minutes a game, that means you know how to control tempo, you know how to slow down, you know how to speed up. So the Cowboys, uh, I want them, and I hope that they get off to a fast start. Uh, you don't want to go into the game like we did against the Commanders. Uh, this is a much better team. Uh Coach, coach wise, these guys are coached very well. They play hard, as you can see right here, because no one expected them to be where they're at. But these go guys yeah. play hard. They're coached well. I think they have something like 40, 48 sacks or 40, yeah, 45 sacks. Excuse me. They got five sacks against their last opponent. They just unleashed their defense on their last opponent. So they got 45 sacks and uh, like I say, Kenny Clark is there. Is their their nose tackle or uh, their three technique, and he and he can play. And Preston Pearson can play. Preston Smith, excuse mm. me. Yeah, Preston Pearson could play too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, day. that guy could play too. <laughs> uh, okay, so and so speaking of guys catching the ball, um, and, and you talked about their receivers. One guy who does not have to scream for the ball anymore is C.D. Lamb. 
right? Yes. He may have to scream like, okay, okay, I'm done, I'm done. No, and he never would. But uh, but the point is, this Dak Prescott to C.D. Lamb you know, combination has become so special this season, Nate. It's become, you know, Troy Aikman to Michael Irvin. I mean, it, it really has. Yes. The thing, the thing is, I think they had a plan for CD, but due to the fact that uh, the situation, how slow we started, uh, out of the gates with Dak, trying to get the system down, trying to – we didn't have a uh, consistent offensive line play. Once they got all of that in place, and uh, and it's just too bad we had to take a loss from the Cardinals early in the season to get things kind of crunk up the way it was uh, because uh, CD is a, is, a, is a great competitor. Uh, he's a kind of the flamboyant 88 type guy. He want to be seen, but within the context of a win, he knows that if he has the ball in his hands, it gives us a chance to, to win. And what CD has done is he's given us what every team desires. If you don't have that, uh, a one, a one quarterback, you have to have a player offensively that teams have to double coverage. Uh, I call it dictators. These guys are dictators. CD Lamb is a dictator. When he go, when he runs out there, out wide in the slot, uh, in the backfield, it's always two guys. Dictators demand two guys. And when, wherever he's at, it's like, how can we bracket him? He's in the slot. We got to put a guy up close, try to jam him. We got to have somebody over the top. If he's outside, we got the corner over there. If it's a short route, we got the linebacker falling. If it's a deep route, we got the, we got the safety falling. We always got two guys on the dictator. You know, now that frees up your run game. Our run game has not been where it needed to be. So we need that C.D. Lamb, that dictator that can can call for two guys to have to uh, deal with him. So uh, Green Bay does not have that. Now, don't get me wrong. They got six receivers. Of, they got four receivers with over 500 yards. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I'm, I'm not saying they don't. But – when CD walks out on the field, they safety in their corner or their safety in their outside linebacker and say, hey, hey, they go to one of them 88s running around out there. Yeah. So we got to yeah. cover this right here. So that opens it up for Cook. That opens it up for Ferguson. That opens it up for yeah. Tony Pollard. So now we got to get a little yeah. more creative on the run. Now, if we can become two-dimensional, we'll crush them. Yeah. Thanks yeah, to and CD I Lamb. Get back to yeah, I want to get to that run game in a minute, but the amazing thing about Lamb is the fact that they have been trying to take him away, right? Everybody knows he's a dictator, and they've been trying. They, they double-team him almost every week, and he's still making 11, 12, 13 catches a week, Nate. It, it, you know, it, it, the thing when you become a dictator, what he has done this year is his catch, his average per catch has dropped just a little bit. Because now we have to give it to you sometime at running back. Now we have to give it to you at slot, quick slant, quick out, uh, bubble screens, quick screens. We got to give it to you any way we can because he's a dictator. He's a playmaker. You know, you've seen him get the ball for a 15-yard catch. All of a sudden, it's a 40-yard touchdown. You've seen him throw yeah. moves on guys. You know what I'm saying? Get first downs. I mean, uh, my wife asked me, you saw a CD stretching that ball out there? That's unsafe. <laughs> I say, sweetheart. I say, stop. You starting to sound like a normal fan. CD ain't normal. <laughs> CD no. ain't normal. If he want to reach the ball out there, I say last week he he got a he it cost us a it cost a fumble and a score. I say, but you know what? Ain't too many people said nothing. It's great players get to do great things because they make great moves and they earn that right. I say, I yeah. say when that dude came close, did he pull it back in? Yeah, he did. I said, don't worry about CD. We need to worry about the other dudes. These uh, guys, we don't know about trying to be CD Lamb because everybody ain't CD Lamb. Right, right. You see that young guy reach that ball out, and Michelle's right. right? Yeah. You're not supposed to do that, young man. What are you doing? What are Let's you thinking? Let's put him right? on the bench. You're CD Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. And, and see, right. even, though I'm, mad at, me. Yeah, even yeah. though I'm mad at the yeah. coaching staff for not – 
uh, letting H- Hannah Lemke run a little bit more. You see what happened when Hannah yeah. Lemke fumbled that ball, right? Yeah. We ain't seen no yeah. more running on the goal line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's true. Yeah. So uh, let's go to that running game because it, it showed life last week, certainly. Tony Pollard had a good day. Nice complimentary, you know, uh, yards and, and carries uh, also from our boy. Uh, uh, Rico Dowdle. Dottle, yeah. So, yeah, so so talk to me. Uh, was that just about the fact that we are talking about a, a commander's team that you know isn't all that, or was that maybe the, the an emergence right that we may see continue? Because like you're saying, if you can keep that defense honest with with the threat of that run game, no telling what C. D. Lamb and the rest of those receivers can do. The, the thing that's amazing is as much as you want to say. Uh, those two Bama boys or just only had one of the Bama boys in there last week. Uh, the, the, the thing that makes me laugh is we had two backup center, a backup guard, two backup guards. So we ran the ball. Uh, was it a a great day against a great team? Nah. The, the, the commanders are not great at this moment. You know, we, who knows what next year brings, but that's next year. But our guys went in and, and executed. They did what they had to do. Uh, we we had a uh, hundred plus yards rushing. We did okay. We had a good average, I think, over over four yards to carry. Uh, you don't worry about who's in the game, who's not in the game. Not when you get ready for playoff football. I I told everybody last week, and I meant it. I didn't care if you won by a hundred. I didn't care if you won by one. Get out of there without an injury. You know, we got Gilmore. And his shoulder. So we got basically got out of there pretty clean besides with one one of our ma- major guys in Gilmore. But I, I'm, I'm telling guys, guys are locked in. For the last two years, guys have been uh, not knowing how to handle the playoffs. You have no rookies, no first-year guys. These are seasoned veteran Playoff battle tested guys that need to get over a hump, Brad. Listen to me. You have no babies. It ain't no young team. It ain't no this. It ain't no that. The only thing you have to worry about, and you don't have to worry about that for two weeks, is the Boombach Boys in California. The Boombach Boys, yeah. the, you, you know, you don't have to worry about yep. that. You. The great thing about the 49ers, now that you have the second seed, the first, the great thing about the, the is you can run through these next two teams, be it ever who it are, who it is. We know it's Green Bay. It could be Tampa or Philadelphia, the next opponent. But now you're worried about Green Bay. Are you scared? No. You got to be breathing with confidence. You got to know that if I go out there and give myself for three hours or 60 minutes, whichever way you want to do it, and I focus and I concentrate on these Green Bay Packers, that everything will take care of itself. I said at the beginning of the year, Rad, I kept trying to tell everybody, when we first lost to Philadelphia, you know the first thing I did when I came on to let me tell you something was let me tell y'all something. Cowboys, just keep winning. You never know what will happen. Guess what? You kept winning. Philadelphia fell off the rock. You are number two seeded because just keep winning and you will take care of whatever has to be taken care of. So I like where you were going with that no babies discussion, Nate. And and what I really like... Having been on this side, right, I like to analyze what I see yes. after a game almost as much as what I see during a game. Mm-hmm. So what I saw after the game this past week when when Dak Prescott came to the press conference, you know, just wearing a stocking cap in that yeah. cold Washington air, right? right. And, and everybody, people asked him, hey, hey, how come you're not wearing your NFC East champions hat? And he said, we got much bigger goals. I'm paraphrasing. He said, that, that ain't what we're shooting for. And and that, as the leader of that team, Nate, I love that, right? That's not whatever. I mean, and you don't want to diminish winning your division because no team has won it back-to-back years for a decade more now. Uh, so, but that said, that's not the goal, winning the NFC East right now. You, you know, you want to be happy for Ron Bland 
and those guys, you know, the young, you know, the guys that, you know, you want to be happy for Mozzie and, you know, you want to be happy for those guys. But it's something on the side of your helmet. And there's only four or five teams in this league. The Yankees, the Cowboys, the Celtics, the Lakers. Well, you know what? Winning your division, a winning a first round playoff series or a first round game does not matter. Right. You have to go out and beat Green Bay. And you have to act like you've been there and done that, which you have for the last two years. Your big celebration should come in the divisional round when you defeat whoever that is. As you take steps towards this magnificent goal of trying to reach a Super Bowl, you either can take this, take the, take the world by storm, like my Cowboys did, or the Kansas City Chiefs, or you can step step like my Cowboys did, and like yeah. and and like you know a lot of other teams have to, like the Rams did a couple of years ago stair step and I, I don't care how you do it because whether you stair stepping that says year after year you're very very competitive or you take the world by storm like Kansas City did with a great quarterback that means that once you take the world by storm that you're still going to be very competitive so either way I can deal with it but just keep winning yeah Yeah. uh, First round playoffs, Nate. I mean, uh, obviously, there's so many memorable playoff games in your era with the Cowboys. Really, most of the most memorable are with San Francisco, uh, a couple with Green Bay. Do you even really remember much about, of course, back then the playoffs were a little different. More teams got buys, too. So you had to buy a lot of years. Right, right. Do you remember first round games much very often? Uh, nah, nah, just, I remember us yeah. trying to get there, you know, going through Philly, uh, playing, yeah. uh, the Giants, just trying to get there, Detroit, you know, you're trying, when you're yeah. trying to get there, you're, but once you get in that second year and you know, you go going to that division around and you, 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 you know, you can win that division around, you know, it just all runs together. You have to get with either Darrell Johnston, uh, uh, Troy, uh, you know, and I guess running backs and wide receivers remember more because they have stats. The only way I'm going to right. remember if we would have got a lot of sacks, <laughs> you know, like the level right. sack game yeah. against Philly. You know, yeah. uh, we we yeah. as yeah. offensive yeah. linemen are allowed to glorify and to to go into because you know Emmitt can run for 200 yards, but. They forgot somebody was blocking for Emmett for them 200 yards. And we kind of think the yeah. same way as offensive linemen. Like, remember, he rushed for 200 yards. Okay. You know, and it's like we helped yeah. him, but it was Emmett, it was Emmett Rucker. When they say, oh, who rushed for the most yards ever? They don't put me, Kevin Gogan, and two in their name, but they put Emmett's name up there. So, no. yeah. yeah. That's how that's I go. True. Yeah. So, here, here's the last thing we got to talk about with regard to this, Nate, is the yeah. psychology of this thing, okay? You mentioned it. The Cowboys have this experience. They've been in the playoffs the last couple of years. However, they've lost in the playoffs the last couple of years. Now, I realize yes, yes. they've lost against the Boombox Boys, right? Yeah. I realize that. But is there, a, is there a psychological hurdle for them to overcome where they don't get like, uh-oh, here we go again, uh-uh. we're in the playoffs, we no, don't sir. do well No, sir, stop. Stop. Okay. See, you didn't even make the right face. You, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Stop. <laughs> Here we come again. Yeah. Here we come again. We like baby's kids. We don't die. We multiply. Not one, <laughs> not two, but three, 12 and five seasons. You reach out and you grab what is real, what is tangible. Don't worry about what happened in the past. If it ain't a positive, don't worry about it. Visualize. Jimmy used to tell us, see yourself dominating. See yourself doing what you have to do. Uh Uh-uh. You kept playing when everybody counted you out against Philadelphia. You are the second seed. We like gifts. 
They tell Radigan, you tell your boys, all your boys that's in the media, tell Dan Campbell, thank you for being so smart. <laughs> you grab every positive you can and you take it and you ball it up and you start rolling it down here like an avalanche so it catches Green Bay. Then it catches the next opponent. And then when we get to the boom box, boys, we not only going to take that box off their shoulder, we're going to turn it up a notch. That's how we do that. That's how we work that. Come on now. Uh, uh-uh, you're talking to Nate. Been there, done that. Come on now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So now, now let me ask you this. You think, oh, McCarthy will let you give a pregame speech? Because that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good, Nate. You got me fired up. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> nah, Come I hope on, I got man. you fired up because I'm drinking my coffee. I'm going to go in there and flush another one. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Nate, love doing it, man. Yeah. Uh, let's enjoy this playoff game. We'll talk soon, my brother. Love you, man. Oh.